Well, May was a wrap, so here are all the games that I beat for May. The first game was Guardians of the Galaxy. This game is exactly like the show or the movie. It's about a guy who you don't know why he's talking a lot of jokes, not very connected to everybody. And then you find out that he was attacked on Earth and brought here unwillingly. He was watching his mom be killed and he now is trying to stop all the craziness that is happening and the people that attacked him from doing any more damage. And nobody's really taking him seriously, so I can see why. But it has a heartfelt moment here or there. Definitely good. The gameplay was good. Repetitive sometimes, but not bad. And you have different levels, different things, multiple people to, to interact with throughout the whole time on the ship. Think of, like, uh, Saints Row, but with a more serious tone to it. And if you like Guardians of the Galaxy, you like this one. The second game that I beat was Killer Instinct Definitive Edition. I had played this on launch when Xbox first originally, it was like around that time, and I sold the game and I was like, hmm, I, I only played it once or twice. Like I literally just put it in the machine, played it for a couple minutes and called it a day. So once the game was launched, I was like, oh, I'm done. But it was on Game Pass and I was like, you know, I haven't played it for a few years. Let's drop it in there again and play it again. Uh, I played a character I normally don't play. I usually play either the the raptor or the female character. I can't remember off the top of my head. But they did a good job on this. It wasn't a bad reboot. Uh, they got a lot of the original people to come back to play the characters and the voiceover guy. And I, I love the nostalgia with a little bit of mix. I, I love when companies do that where you get a little bit of nostalgia, but you still get the new stuff. And they don't destroy the buttons by making them brand new combos and stuff like that. You still have familiar stuff. You recognize, okay, this combo works for this. You don't get overwhelmed and you're not going to be like, oh, crap. Here we go again. What the hell do they do to this game? But I liked it and I enjoyed this fighter. The third game that I beat was Fight Night Champion. Never played Fight Night Champion. I played Fight Night up until I stopped playing on PS2. Don't know why. I played a lot of boxing games when I had my PS2. It was ridiculous how many games I had. And for some odd reason, just never came across Fight Night Champion. I don't know why. And it's a really good story. Uh, basically, you are a guy who is an up-and-coming kid who is trying to work his way through the ranks and do it the right way. And there's a manager who keeps harassing you and telling you, you need to work for me or something's gonna happen and he makes something happen. He makes you go to jail and you have to work your way through the ranks to get back from the obscure, nobody knows you anymore and work your way again to now everybody knows my household name, but he has a fighter he is working with and your brother and you're like, oh crap, what the hell am I gonna do with this one? And you, you basically tell Frost like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess you up and he is full of plot armor the guy at the end of the fight you could get a good lucky right hook in he doesn't drop he literally lasts about eight nine rounds and you have to work your way through and follow what they want you to do you, they tell you to work the body you got to work that body and throw in some liver shots whatever you need to do to get him to weaken and i'm just like this this fight was one of the hardest fights i've ever had and i've i've done a lot of boxing fighting games a lot of games where there was like some ridiculous plot armor and it just was so difficult frustrating and I could see a lot why a lot of people put this down right at that point because if you didn't have patience and go okay understand that no matter how much I try I gotta stay away from him because one shot and you're done he gets a lucky hook and you're done and that's the one thing that was a little frustrating but I battled through got through defeated frost and made myself a champion and back into the good graces of everybody and you'll have a good time with this game if you take the time and understand that you're not gonna get a lucky shot keep going and you'll be fine
After Fight Night Champion, I decided to play another old boxing game that I haven't played for years. I used to play Ready, Rumble, Ready to Rumble Boxing, it's a tongue twister, on the PlayStation and it was on the Dreamcast and other things like that and I used to play it all the time. But I never played the N64 version and I was like, let's see what's different about this one compared to the other two versions. I like the first one better than the second one. The first one, you just build up your character, you work your way through, and there is no, oh snap, what the hell am I doing? It's literally, you do your training, build up your supplements, like it's hilarious, like you can take supplements if you want to, and then you fight, and you have to learn each character's, like, pattern. They literally have a pattern. There is no, like, plot armor. It's like, learn this pattern, figure out how to maneuver around them, and Stay away from their finishing moves. They always have like a finishing move and if you stay away from that, you're good to go. I've played this game so much that I, it was like brought back so many memories of like uh, the commercials. They were so good. The only thing I wish I could do is, is stream this game, but sadly the guy who did the let's get ready to rumble, he, uh, he blocked that. So he, uh, takes your, your video and sometimes he strikes them depending on the person. Like I've seen people battle it out and he wins every time, but. I understand why but I wish I could play this game online and stream and everything like that and see what would happen we need a reboot we need a reboot of this one for sure the next game that I played was a game that reminded me of so many PlayStation 2 platformers back in the day and it's called the gunk it is a story about a woman uh, two women and you land on a planet and you're investigating. They're scientists or they're adventurers and they're trying to figure out what's going on with different planets, get vegetation, life forms, take them back, organisms and, and understand them in a scientific manner to figure out the universe. And literally you walk up on some gunk and you're like, what is this? What the hell is this? I'm, I'm scared. You literally take your time, you try to figure it out, and all of a sudden you come across a couple creatures and you're like, what happened here? And they're like, oh, this evil man took over the planet and convinced us all that we were going to be safe with him, but in reality he put us all in cryogenic tubes and now my whole family, all my people are stuck there, can you please help? And you have to make a decision and she does, she makes a decision to go help them, get rid of that guy, but... You're like Ratchet and Clank a little bit. You only have little machine arm things that you got to flick and move around and you're you're limited on how hard you can jump and how fast you can jump and it's got puzzles, environmental puzzles and you work around and you go, okay, so gotta hit that to hit this, to get this, to get that. And you gotta get power ups and I miss, I miss old platformers like that and they did a great job bringing back the nostalgia but also Fixing the problems, I have used to have a lot of problems with certain things with environmental puzzles to where it doesn't handhold you, but you have to look and you go, okay, this, 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 and this, and you'll enjoy it. It's a good time. If you loved PS2 platformers back in the day, you will love this. It'll remind you of Ratchet and Clank or it'll remind you of Jack and Daxter where you have a little, you know, creature walking around and you're trying to figure out what they're doing. So try this game. You'll have a good time with it. I recommend it. The next game was called Chinatown Detective Agency. This one is just like the old 90s PC games, like where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I was in nostalgia heaven with this game. It basically is you are a private detective and you're investigating what the client wants. So the client walks in or you call the client and you say, hey, uh, what's, what's the job today? And so it could be something as simple as find where this coin needs to go to who killed this person and it has a time limit. So if you mess up, the game ends. So you have to pay attention to your time. You have to work through, you have to... The one good thing is, is we have Google now so I can look at the little stuff and go, okay, so that says this, let me figure that out. What does this mean? And I'll say, oh, this is from this country. So. A lot easier than pulling out an encyclopedia and looking through it and trying to figure out with an encyclopedia. But if you love 90s PC old games like Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, you're going to love this game. I highly recommend it for any of my old PC players. This has got the graphics, it has the voice acting, it has all the stuff that we used to have back in the day. And you have 
everything and there's a couple of ways it could end so you're not stuck to just one ending you could have a multitude of different styles and if you love detective games if you love trying to investigate puzzle games this is right up your alley you're gonna have a great time with it the seventh game that i played was dirt 5. i had been playing this racing game for a couple weeks it took a little bit of time i always when i play in a racing game i take my time do a few races jump to the other games so i was intertwining this game with the other ones because it takes a little bit of time to get through all the races um, you basically can choose your path of where you want to go. You can take the top layer, the middle layer, or the bottom layer. And you have a mentor who is guiding you along. You finish a race, you'll hear him tell you like, oh, this is what you should have done. Or, whoa, dial it back a little bit. You don't make everybody mad at you. You're going to have some issues. And so you go through and at the very end, you battle your mentor. So you have a good time with it. It's basically just racing on dirt the whole time. If you like dirt racing, you're going to enjoy this game. Um, I, I'm cool with it. I didn't have a problem with either way of it being, you know, dirt, ground, cement, whatever I'm racing on. I'm cool with anything. I like the mechanics of the car. It wasn't too loosey-goosey where I was going to be like, oh, damn, I'm going to feel this, you know. It didn't have you drift so bad to where you kept losing control. Um, I've played a couple racing games where I didn't like the controls where you just keep spinning out and it's like no matter what you do to fix it it's like uh, you literally have to keep tapping and I'm like I, I don't mind tapping to guide my car because I'm used to that I've played Need for Speed other stuff like that for drifting sections but if I'm spinning out all the time I will not like that game so I, I recommend this game it's got a good storyline you have enough races and you can actually do all the lines if you want to. So if you want to do all three lines, you can go as far as you want. Uh, I played a lot of the races and then I chose my path and I went, okay, I'm going to take the top. And I literally took the top and just kept going with that one. But you can have however you want to go. And if you want to go back and finish the other races, you can. I, I decided not to, but a lot of people could do that if they wanted to. And I don't know if there's another hidden ending or something like that if you do all the races. But uh, if you have beaten all the races, let me know. In the comments below did you have a good time with the game did you have a different ending from what you got but i don't know <laughs> i'm not gonna look it up i don't want to spoil it but uh i don't mind if you spoil it in the comments but that's how it is with racing games you never know what you're gonna get after dirt 5 i played another fighting game i was mma today for this one and it was ufc 3. Um, I've played a lot of the UFC games, and I've played them from PlayStation 2 all the way up, PlayStation 1, 2, and it was a lot different. Um, you have a social media, and you have uh, an opportunity to keep yourself in the limelight, so you can go to events, you can do whatever you want to do, but if you go to an event, you don't train, so you have to keep your training up, like keep your social media up, and it's a fine balance of what do you do, how do you do this. And I do like that you, instead of doing like some weird obscure fighting league, they actually got in touch with a fighting league that I've heard of before for the amateur circuit. And you fight through that and then you work your way through. Um, I got championship and I got greatest of all time, whatever that means in the game. I we used to not have that when we were doing UFC games. It was literally you just fight until you didn't want to fight anymore. Or your fighter was of the age of when it wanted to retire in the game. And this one, you could retire or you could keep fighting. So you had to choose. And I just retired the game, five year, whatever, because I was like, hey, I got I got my championship. I got greatest of all time. I'm going to end it on a high note and be done. I uh, might be like Michael Jordan and just come back. You don't know. But uh, I decided to end it because I was like, I got, I'll got. i move on to other games. After UFC, I played a little game called Windjammers. Uh, this was on the arcade for, I believe, Neo Geo SNK. And literally... This one got ported to the PS4. Uh, I never actually got to play it. It was in my backlog. I had hauled off for a while and I was like, oh, let's throw this on. I saw that on Game Pass that they had the second one. I'm still playing through that, trying to beat that one. But this one is actually really fun. It's a uh, Pong meets air hockey meets volleyball. It's literally you are characters from around the world and you come to a tournament to, f to face off. And the platform slash area you fight in 
you could have, you know, obstacles in the middle so that it can make it a little bit more difficult on where the game disc is going to go. It's a little frisbee. And you have to either do a power shot or a trick where it's going to make it go in a weird spot to hopefully trick them. And this is difficult. It's not easy. It's not like, oh, you just do this and you're done. It's like you have to learn their strategy, how they fight. You have to be far enough ahead to catch the disc where they don't throw you into the net. And if they plow you into the net with a disc, you still lose the points even though you catch the disc. So it's a fun game. It's a little difficult. But once you get the patterns down of each player, you'll always win and have a good time. I love the mini games. They have little mini games where you could be catching as a disc of a, from the dog or bowling. It's so old school. I love it. And I'm glad that they put it to the PS4 now so I can play it anytime I want. The next game that I played was Paddington Adventures in London for the 3DS. It's a little game where it's kind of like a puzzle game, um, hide and seek kind of thing where you're Paddington, you're moving in with your new family, and you want the neighborhood to see that you're not a dangerous bear, you're a good bear. And so you have to go in and tell them, hey, I'm, I'm going to help you, what do you need help with? And they'll say, oh, I lost my camera, or I lost my guitar, or I lost this. Or, hey, can you clean up the neighborhood? So you walk around, you clean up the trash, you get it like nice, and you earn points. And you want your level to be so high that everybody goes, yay, Paddington, you did so good. And you have to find sandwiches, and it's not that difficult. It literally is just you try the environment and tap on the environment to see if this triggers something. Because there's a little bit of hidden stuff in the in everywhere, but not that bad. And uh, this game I 100 percented just to make sure that I counted it for the list. So it's you have to get all the sandwiches, get all the items, get everybody up to happy mode of whatever, and get your max on your level, and you're done. So it, it's not that difficult. There's not a lot of collectibles. It's literally like five or six sandwiches each level, and you just make sure that everything is done. And you get, as I think it's like you get all of the people in that level helped out, which is the same five or six people. It's just they're asking for different things. And it could be like a dancing sequence where, hey, let's liven up this section of the city. Okay, let's do that. It's like, okay, cool. So thank you, uh, whoever made this game. It's, it's hilarious. It's cute. Um, I can see why kids like this game or people like this game. But... Yeah, I had a good time with it, and um, I don't recommend it to everybody because not everybody's going to like this game, but if you're into puzzle games where you're trying to like figure out the world, you want a cute little cozy game, that's what I call them, cozy games, it's right up your alley. After that, I played The Interworld The Last Wind Monk. It is a Games with Gold game. Um, I saw this game a while back and I never wanted to pick it up because I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like it. And now that it was free to try, I popped it into the system and I tried it. And it's a adventure puzzle game, kind of like uh, all the other ones that I've played in the past where there's an environment, there's different puzzles, you have to do this before that, before this, and you, it's a little bit difficult on the ending. I had to try, it took me a couple times, like, I do something, I'm like, oh, I messed up, so I have to go back, and you have to, like, pay attention to the environment and see, like, how things change, what to do, kind of, like, you have to, like, use common sense with a little bit of the environment and the puzzle and figure it out, but uh, you're a little kid who is a prince, and you want to be the king, and this guy is trying to stop you from being the king and wants his own guy who's named Conroy to come back and you have to stop Conroy from coming back and you have to stop everybody and you have to get the wind monks to help you out so you have to travel to the wind monks they're up in the mountains somewhere and you have to find them and bring them down to get everybody back to good old days and you become the king and so I enjoyed it um I can see why a lot of people said oh this is too difficult I don't like it and yeah, it, from the whole time I played it, it was, the puzzles were very, like, okay, let me try this. Literally, I just tried everything until it finally triggered the next scene. And <laughs> I was like, I did a lot. There was a lot of just, like, try this trial and error. And uh, it took me a while. It wasn't like I finished it in a day. Because I think you could be finishing it in a day if you knew what you're doing. But it took me a, a couple days, for sure. 
Second to last game that I played was Orcs Must Die. This is an Xbox 360 game. It was on the Games with Gold month and it literally is kind of like Plants vs. Zombies where you have to use strategy to keep orcs from coming at the portal and you're trying to stop them from getting to the portal to attack the next part of the city. And you're an apprentice of a wizard and you're horrible and he just keeps going, oh, this, this guy is horrible. Like, why are you here? <laughs> oh, I got the bottom of the barrel today. And so you have to prove your worth. You have to be like, no, I can fight this. So you put down traps, you use your sword, you use your crossbow to keep them at bay. You get archers and other medieval fighters to help you out. So you have to not only worry about like the time limit of like when the traps can be dropped. Also, you need to keep managing your money because you get some certain amount of money to buy other things. So you get like magical money and then you put it down. So like I use a lot of archers. That was my strategy and it worked. Uh, just use a lot of archers. Uh, it helps you out and they can stop the flying creatures. And because I thought it was all like little minions on the ground. No, there's a couple flying creatures. Once I figured that out, it was archers all the way for sure. And the last game for the month was The Walking Dead Michonne, the mi Telltale mini series. It's uh, three chapters and I played this on the stream all the way through. It's about three, four hours of game and I enjoyed it. I got to see Michonne's story. Uh, thank you Aldo for helping me out. It was literally, Aldo told me that it was from a certain section, the comics, not the show. So you literally are watching the comics play out and I liked it. It's basically a lot of quick time events and choosing what's going to happen. And there's multiple ways that you can see the story end and I like games like that where you don't know how you're going to choose or what you're going to do to get to the next part, to do this, to do that. The trophies slash achievements for the PlayStation 4 PlayStation, and Xbox um, consoles, very abundant. Like you literally do one thing, get a trophy, do this, get a trophy, do that, get a trophy. I just laughed. I had a good time with that. But if you want trophies, play this game because <laughs> I played the first season and the second season and I'm going to start playing them now, hopefully. Um, they are there for a while, so I can keep playing, but I had a good time with this game. That was a blast. I enjoyed playing it on stream with everybody, seeing people's reactions, and hopefully uh, I can play other games and we can all enjoy them together and see what happens. I don't know. A lot of people were like, oh, I don't want to see what happens to her, Clementine, and, and if she's going to get attacked. And it's like, yeah, she's going to get attacked when she gets older. That's how Walking Dead works, but I'll debate about it, and we'll see what happens. Well, everybody, that was all the games that I beat for May. I beat 13 games total. And again, that is now at 66 because I was at 53. So I'm blazing through again and we'll see what happens next month. So keep on the lookout for that. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep on gaming at any level and I'll keep plugging away at my games for Xbox Game Pass and other my backlog that I have over here. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. And if you are new, hit the sub button and give it a like, and I'll catch you next video. Bye. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games too.